All right, Bob, it says it's not legal in California, so I'm expecting something uh, exceptionally onerous with giant capacity of magazines or, uh, or full auto capability or uh, exploding things or something. Right, you know, and uh, it, it even, it's even set off more by, you know, it's got tactical rails built into the box. Oh, you could mount a scope to the box. Scope on that side and you can have your laser on this side. That's probably what made it illegal in California right there. It's an illegal briefcase. It's a tactical box. So tactical, with the keyword being tactical, because what we have inside is the tactical operator, the TRP-1911. Kind of a silly thing. Not legal in California. A 1911 only has eight plus one capacity. It's scary. It must be because it's it's black. Everybody's scared of black. Well, I don't I don't understand what could make this not legal in California. I don't know. I guess Boy, I just got know. a nice smooth sound and slide, Bob. So this is it's just a it's a 1911. It is the tactical operator. It has a rail built in. Tell me about this. Well, the reason why I bought this, the only reason, is a couple years ago I, I read this little-known book by this author who was a, a Navy SEAL. And uh, his name is Chris Kyle. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of him. So glad you didn't say Jesse Ventura. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he had mentioned uh, in the book that he did not like his Mark 25 six-hour... 2269 millimeter that he was issued. Right. He wanted knockdown power, not capacity. He wanted a TRP operator. And so, well, if the best of the best of the most confirmed kills in the Navy SEALs had to have a, a an operator, well, by golly, I've got to have an operator too. You know what? I see some cool stuff. Just looking at this, Bob, I'm not familiar with this firearm at all. I see it has uh, some very nice Trigicon adjustable night sights, um, and they look very robust and adjustable. It has a bushingless barrel setup. It has a very cool skeletonized trigger with uh, over travel adjustment. Mm -hmm. It has a beaver tail with a little extended the little knobby thing. The little extended knobby thing. It has a skeletonized commander style hammer. Uh, ambidextrous safety has some very nice G10 grips with a relief cut to access the mag release and it also has a magwell funnel for rapid magazine changes some very very nice checkering on the front and the rear very aggressive yes so if your hands are covered in blood or uh, peanut butter you're gonna be able to have a firm positive grip on it but uh, so we've got this pistol here uh, is it better than, say, like a, a Colt 1991? Is it better than a para-ordnance uh, commander? Is it better than a regular Springfield? Feeling the slide, my first thoughts are yes. It has a very, very smooth and tight slide. You know, I've had a little bit of experience with some uh, custom type 1911s. Mm -hmm. And the slides felt really reminiscent to this, you know, like with uh, with my Colt. I mean, it feels like it's got sandpaper in it when I rack the slide back. Right. And uh, that's pretty common with 1911s that are on a budget mm -hmm. type uh, setup. It uh, doesn't really affect how how they perform, but you can just you can tell quality when you feel it. Sure, sure. Well, so what's the, what's the MSRP? What's the price point on this particular piece? At Gators Custom Guns in Kelso, Washington, this was fourteen hundred and eighty-nine dollars. So this is a year over fifteen hundred dollars by the time you go out the door. Yeah. So and that's a that's a really nice carbine. It's that's it's also a nice pistol. Several so, pistols. <laughs> Or several pistols. I mean, that's the price of three Glock 21s. Exactly. So is this is this three or three entry level 45s? Mm -hmm. I mean, we both have, have bought plenty of 45s under $500, uh, 1911s. Yeah. So is there an added benefit? Does it shoot straighter? Uh, does it? Uh, 
you know, does it feel better in the hand? Does it feel like something that, uh, you know, I want to hold on to for a lifetime type pistol? Or is this something that I just want to turn around and flip and turn it towards something else? And a lot of those uh, points that you bring up, Bob, are going to be subjective and to the individual. Absolutely. So this is really just subjective and to your impression, knowing that you could have three other lesser firearms or significantly less expensive less firearms expensive, right? or have this yeah that, right. that chris kyle uh liked and decided that this is what he wanted to trust his life to and now, now it's worth noting that he was a sniper so he's he's far away from the action most of the time mm -hmm. and so he's not in the thick of it all the time which is really similar to our role as a civilian this is a piece we're not really in the thick of it, but if if you wanted something that you needed a few rounds and a few good rounds, then he chose this, and so there's uh, there's some valid attention to that. Yeah, you know, uh, being a fan of the book, you know, I did uh, respect, you know, what his thoughts were and authority on uh, firearms, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, it's it, it really did drive the purchase in this, and since then. You know, there's been a, a movie made about him that's gotten very popular. A lot of people have read the book. They've mm -hmm. probably heard about the TRP model, so it's something that's very familiar with a lot of people out there. You know, this did come with, you know, if you feel like you're getting hosed on the $1,500 plus, you know, it's, it's worth to note that you do get a holster with it. Okay. Okay, so that, that's got to be worth uh, another $0.35. Cents. Right. does come with a, uh, a cool tactical... Uh, magazine holder that well. also has uh, rails on it, it so does. that's probably also illegal in California because it's got tactical rails I mean this holster holder could have laser sights on it absolutely and that would make it deadly yeah and offset sight on one side I mean dang right. this thing is just a, a felony waiting to happen yeah yeah scary yeah and so it also uh, it came with a, uh, a bristle brush and uh, we've uh, we preloaded these up. It did come with uh, three uh, ultra high capacity eight round magazines. Oh, whoo, whoo! Not seven, not like seven. like the old school 1911 magazines. These are eight. Yeah, and so we also uh, got some uh, literature because you know we, we didn't spend enough money with Springfield. They want to get us on oh, she shoots a... like a girl T-shirts. Oh, or a coffee cup. Or a coffee cup. That's yeah. right. So, and there's a big book that we haven't read, but uh, why don't we just shoot this thing and then we can just uh, form an opinion and see if this is a pistol that you need to have or just go buy three Glocks instead. I just want to know if you, spending $1,500 on this pistol, if after your initial impressions, if you think that that was a worthy investment. had one failure to seat fully, Bob. That was a, a new round. It's a brand new gun. That's right. magazine was full of full metal jackets. Uh, this is some federal hollow points. It has 
a nice trigger, a nice feel. It's shooting right at point of aim for me. It's a nice pistol. Uh, so we had, it was probably the fourth or fifth round. I think it was on the second magazine. So it was probably the tenth round. We did have one failure to feed um, that I don't think was necessarily attributed to the ammo. Uh, but that's definitely why we're shooting all this ammo is to break it in because obviously you wouldn't want to carry a weapon or judge its reliability until you put 200 rounds or so through it. And um, as far as it digesting good ammo, and after the initial couple of magazines, uh, it ran really well. Yeah, it, uh, it ran, you know, uh, about how I expected it would run. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, kind of actually surprised we didn't have more failures. Mm -hmm. uh, just because I've had a, a bad track record with new 1911s, not wanting to, to function 100% unless mm -hmm. you get that 250 rounds through the, uh, through the pipe. Sure. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I am impressed on how it feels in recoil. It feels like it recoils a little bit softer than uh, than my Colt, which you know is still a very fine firearm. Mm -hmm. But you know, I paid a third of what I paid for that for this Colt. Mm -hmm. How do those stack up? You know, and, and guess what? The uh, both of those were purchased with your hard-earned wages. Right. So I, I'm curious. I know kind of what I what I feel about that. Mm -hmm. I, I'm curious as to what you feel about. What I feel is, you know, for functionality, mm -hmm. uh, and as far as accuracy, it's identical between the two of them. Mm -hmm. What we saw here today, uh, you know, what this doesn't have is this doesn't have real nice uh, Trigicon sights on it. Doesn't right. have night sights. You know, this has just a standard post on it. Mm -hmm. You cannot change these out if you wanted to. I think that the back one is dovetailed so you could change out your rear sight. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have a rail on it. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have aggressive checkering. Right. But conversely. Doesn't have not, a very nice knob on the beaver tail. Doesn't have a knob on the beaver tail. Doesn't, doesn't have, have the AMB. commander style hammer. Doesn't have an AMB. Uh, you know, any other uh, upgrades that have been done to this pistol, you know, I've done them by myself or, you know, hired somebody to work on it. Sure. Uh, to get it kind of up to this par. Mm -hmm. You know, this has a custom trigger in it. You know, it's much lighter and much smoother and crisper than what the standard 1991 Colts offered. This one is set up good to go. I mean, this feels like a real nice match weapon. Mm -hmm. uh, for my personal taste, I think the texturing is a little bit aggressive. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it really does dig into the front of your hands. And after, you know, uh, we were shooting a bunch of rounds today, you know, gripping onto the onto the grip, you know, you can definitely feel, at least on my hands, a little bit of tenderness. Sure. I think it's a great looking handgun. You know, whether or not, you know, it's worth $1,500 is, uh, you know, it's really up to the, the purchaser. I do like the handgun. I wish it was about a $900 pistol. And, and that's really kind of what I was thinking. Um, I was thinking uh, more along the lines of, uh, it would be awesome. See, a lot of the fine nuances of the very expensive 1911s are frankly lost on me. And it's and it's probably my bad because I'm not sophisticated enough to understand the intricacies of a $2,000 1911. You just don't understand. If I have to explain it, you won't understand. Well, I don't understand. You spent two grand on a gun that... I don't, I can't feel, shoot any different than my six or seven hundred dollar one. Right. It doesn't make a lick of sense right. to me. So it's lost on me. So you have to forgive me, folks, because I just, I just don't get it. So I do understand that all of the accessories add up and they add up quickly, especially if you're going to have a gunsmith install them. So by the time you start adding and have all this stuff done, you know, if you were going to start with a if you were going to start with a, a $600 Springfield that had a rail and then bring it all up to this, then you would probably be, you would be over a thousand dollars having this stuff done. Right. You know, especially if you're going to get, start getting into the aggressive uh, stippling and then refinishing and doing all that stuff. So, so then, well, now you're over a, a thousand and you're $1,200 and then it's not really that big of a leap to 
fifteen hundred dollars you can find these on sale in the twelve hundred dollar range you know they are out there you know if you're uh taking your time looking for something sure you know, it's uh definitely attainable for that price um i've stated and and you've concurred and we both agree that it that a firearms collection would be incomplete without some kind of a 1911 right and here's where I, I can see that this makes sense because if a person didn't need 18 or 19 handguns mm -hmm. I don't understand who those people are but maybe they there's some people that don't that goes. yeah right so if, if you don't need 18 or 19 different variations of different handguns and you just wanted one and you wanted a really good one this is this would be I mean this would be a great one look you could just one and done yeah so if you were uh, if you were looking for a one and done 1911 and wanted a premium one I think this is a this is a great pistol and that would be fifteen hundred dollars plus spent right for me if I wanted uh, I, I would I might want one in a 38 super and one in a in a this and one with a rail and one with not and so I would I would tend to want to have three different 1911s mm -hmm. uh, than one fifteen hundred dollar 1911 right. but that's me and it also comes back to the fact that I don't understand I just don't get it the, the nuances are lost on me right no, it's a it's a cool firearm you know uh, you know for me you know it didn't shoot any better than than the old trusty Colt you mm -hmm. know that I picked up for 500 so it's a uh, still a cool pistol i'm still glad i have it you know the, the reasons for buying it you know are a little bit uh, different from somebody just walking into a, a gun shop just to, to go out and buy a 1911. sure you know this was a uh, something i had sought after and looked for for quite a while and and knowing that that chris kyle had had chose this particular piece does does give some credence to the value but you know if it uh, was trusted by him, you know, uh, after that break-in period of getting to know your weapon, you know, learning it, you know, it's, it's going to be a, a real good uh, piece for home defense, and that's really why I have it. Mm -hmm. So this has the night sights, whereas the Colt doesn't have the night sights. Sure. And, uh, frankly, it cannot be adapted to have night sights put on the front of it unless I send it off to have some really expensive machining done to it. Mm -hmm. So, and I have put a lot of time and money into this to bring it up to the quality that it's at now. Sure. But, uh, so it's really going to be up to personal preference, you know. I, I'm, I can't give this an overly great review saying, oh my God, this is the best thing I've ever owned. Sure. I think it's a great firearm. Uh, I definitely put it up there probably in the, the top 60 or 70% of the handguns that I've owned. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's the best handgun I've ever owned. Mm -hmm. But still, nonetheless, it, it's a great 1911. I think it is a great 1911. Yeah. So anyway... That's all I've got to really say about that. All right. Put it back in the case, and maybe in another year we'll shoot it again. That sounds great. Hey, folks, you can't take back a bullet. You never, ever, ever want to wish that you could. So follow the four basic safety rules of firearm uh, handling. And if you like what you saw today, please like and subscribe. We appreciate your subscriptions. That's right. Your mom called. She said she liked the video especially. She wants you to give it a thumbs up for her. <laughs> so listen to Mama. <laughs> wash behind your ears and give this video a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.